B Mega is a squad. Let's get a sheets reducer. Yo, have you ever wanted that vintage sampler sound without having to spend that vintage sampler money? Well, today we're gonna dig into that real quick. Let's get into it. So recently, I caught a video on uh, SB1200 Zone's uh, Instagram page, and it was a video about the SB1200, of course. Um, and uh, within that video, I saw a clip, and I actually played a clip right now. The 90s, and I was married to the SB1200, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you gotta get every element to the beat in 10.2 seconds. So what I did was put the record on 45. You know, you played it faster. Then things slowed it down in here. Boom, back. That's it. Now, as you can see, what Pete Rock said was in that clip is that he basically would take a sample, speed it up, he put it on the turntable, play it on 45, speed it up, and then slow it back down. So first things first, I'm going to give you a little tip, a little hint. If you have a turntable, you can speed it up to 45. Once you speed it up to 45, you need to fine tune your sample once it's recorded. Uh, bring it down 0.19 cents, or 19 cents, I should say, on the fine tune. So that way it's, it's, uh, back, it's back tuned. Otherwise, no matter how many semitones you bring up or down, it will be out of tune. And you'll have like the worst time trying to, um, trying to play something over that sample because everything will always sound out of tune. Um, also bring it down five semitones if you want it to be um, back to the original tempo and pitch. All right, so five semitones down and then 19 cents down as well and you back at, and you're back at the original pitch. But even if you did that with your with your record player and your sampler uh, with let's say with an iPad or a computer or whatever the case may be, once you get back down to that original pitch, it's still going to sound the same. The sound is not going to degrade much. So you have to think like, well, well why is that? And the reason is, is that these older samplers, they had different AD converters. AD stands for analog to digital converters. So basically, um, the analog audio will be converted to a digital uh, file. And once it's converted to that digital file, it was, it was not a 16-bit or even a 24-bit file. And the, the sample rate was not 44.1, nor was it 48 kilohertz. So for example, SB1200 was 12 bits and 22.500 kilohertz, okay? Um, and what that does is it kind of just, it, it just, it does something magical to like the high frequencies in your sample. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna explore how to kind of create our own like gritty sampler with whatever platform you wanna use, okay? so. I'm going to use Beatmaker 3, but if you just take what I'm what I'm doing here and you apply it to whatever sampler or, or door that you're using, you can pretty much do the same. Let's get started. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the audio effects and I'm going to apply the effects only to the first pad because that's where I have the sample. So the first effect I'm going to apply to it is a low pass filter. Um, I want to take off some of the high frequencies and then I'm also going to add some of them back using um, the resonance of the filter as well. And the reason why I'm doing this is because when you add those filters back that way with resonance, it kind of adds a little bit more of a sparkle to the sound when you throw a bit crusher behind that. So that's the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a bit crusher. And with the bit crusher, I'm just going to imitate the specs of uh, an SB1200. Now, obviously, it's not going to sound exactly the same as an SB1200, but once you record the effects from the bit crusher as well as a filter onto the sample and you pitch it down, it will give you a little bit more of a vintage, uh, vintage feel and sound on, on the sample itself. So at this point, I'm just going to add a compressor just to kind of just glue things together a little bit more. This is just a personal preference. You don't have to do this. Um, it's just something I'm just doing just because uh, I think it would just work a little bit better. 
Now, I'm just gonna op open up the attack on the compressor so it lets those drums through and it doesn't have like that kind of like um, that choppy sound that it had when the attack was really quick. All right, so at this point, I'm pretty much satisfied with the sound. So I already have a sequence recorded. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the pad page and I'm going to actually route the audio through the audio recorder so, um, so that the audio from pad one and only from pad one is being sent to pad two, okay? And I'm gonna change the recording, thresh, recording mode to sync as opposed to threshold and the length I'm gonna bring it down to free and once I hit start it's gonna um, ask it's gonna say waiting and once you hit play it'll start now I'll hit stop and the sample's been recorded so let's hear it so now you can hear the sample has been slowed down to its original tempo and uh, this is exactly what I was looking for. So now I've chosen some drums. And the drums that I have, I really like, but that hi-hat is a little too clean. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just going to repeat the process that I did before. Um, and the way I'm gonna do this is by going back to bank A and I'm gonna load that hi-hat, that same hi-hat, into pad one but i'm going to load it to and load it to an existing layer to an extra layer to it and then mute the first sample the reason why i'm doing that is because if i load the sample on there and replace the layer it will take all the effects away as well all right so now here's the original hi-hat and what i'm going to do is i'm just simply going to repeat the process that i did before okay i'm going to route the audio now to Pad eight from bank B. I'm gonna sync, hit play. As you can hear, I played it and recorded it. So here's an A and B comparison of the two samples. So as you can hear, the original sample it just has a lot more high frequencies and it's just a bit clearer. And the second one is just a little, this is a little, um, a little dirtier. And I'm gonna uh, turn the saturation up so I can get a little more volume out of it. So here's the track with the hi-hat in it and everything like that. Now I'm hearing that I want a chant in here, specifically that yeah sample that, that Kanye uses quite a bit. Um, I think it'll fit in here real well. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing. I'm gonna load it, add to existing layer. Okay, I'm gonna mute the previous uh, sample that I had in there before. And I'm just going to repeat the process once again. Turn it up six semitones. All right, so here we are back in bank B. I'm on pad nine, and I'm gonna turn it from threshold to sync. Um, I'm gonna hit start, hit play. Sample's been triggered and recorded. So now that I've dropped the pitch, you can hear that it's a bit more crunchy and it has a, um, a bit of a distorted quality to it. So. I'm also going to add some high pass to it just to kind of take out some of that bottom. So I'm going to use the trigger pad, the velocity trigger pad on the side so I can kind of imitate the delay effect that people would use on it on like an SP1200. And this way I don't have to use an actual delay. I can just trigger the sample a couple of times. And that saves me on CPU processing problem. All right, so that's pretty much it. It's your boy Cheesy Producer. And I'm signing off for Beatmakers and Squad. Thanks for watching. I ask that you comment, rate, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you next week. Peace.